Good morning, everybody. Chris here with High Seas Cruising, and welcome to today's video. I want to start off today talking about the International Longshoremen Association. They did go on strike on October the 1st. Now, they had announced that if they didn't come to a contractual agreement, this was going to happen, and it did happen. And there was some speculation as to whether or not this would affect cruise lines and it would affect passengers, luggage getting on board ships and supplies, but it's not going to affect cruising whatsoever. They are only striking against cargo, so it could affect supplies coming into your, like your local stores, could result in price increases, could result in shortages at the grocery stores, but will not be affecting cruises. They did come out and say, we understand that many families plan and pay for cruise vacations on passenger ships more than a year out, and we don't want them to be disappointed or inconvenienced in any way. So if you have an upcoming cruise, don't worry about the longshoreman strike. It is not going to affect your cruise. So hopefully that does put some people's minds at ease that were concerned about that. Now, the saga of the Villa V Odyssey, well, it unfortunately does continue. This is almost ready to become a soap opera with the number of problems this poor cruise ship and these poor passengers continue to have. Now, Monday, they were able to board their cruise ship they are finally at least allowed to sleep in their cruise cabins. And the ship did sail away from Belfast, but it didn't make it all that far. It made it a couple miles offshore, come to a stop, dropped anchor, and that's where it still is. Their current delay is apparently is a paperwork issue. They're missing some type of paperwork. Now this ship was supposed to sail back in May. So how it is now October, and you realize that you were missing paperwork, I, I honestly, I have no idea how this kind of stuff is happening. But yeah, they're having a paperwork snafu. Hopefully they get that fixed here soon and that ship can finally sail. But yeah, still delayed. Now we have another port, another port here in the United States that's ready to impose that becoming famous new cruise passenger fee. We are seeing this across the board. We're seeing it in the Caribbean. We are seeing it over in Europe. Now we're going to see it here in the United States because Haines, Alaska, they now want to put a $9 passenger arrival fee on cruise passengers that come and visit. Now they are looking for an influx of revenue. What are they going to do with this revenue? They're going to build, repair, and improve port facilities. Now they voted on this September the 24th. They got it approved, and it actually goes into effect today, October the 2nd. Now, the Alaska cruise season is it's over with for this year, so we won't see these fees until next year. Okay, now according to the Assembly, these fees aim to offset the cost incurred by Haynesboro in acquiring, operating, leasing, and constructing, repairing, improving, and equipping its port facilities. And these fees will also be used to mitigate the burden and impacts that cruise ships and guests have on the town services and infrastructure. Now, this $9 fee may not seem like a lot, but it's actually scheduled to increase over time. So it's only going to start off at $9. In 2027, it goes to $12 and then $13 by 2029. So it is scheduled to gradually increase over time. Now I ask the question every time we see one of these increases, is this really to benefit infrastructure? Is this really designed to improve facilities there at the cruise ports? Considering that when you go to a cruise port, you already pay port fees and taxes. Now port fees and taxes, they go to all the kinds of different things. They do cover the pilot that brings the cruise ship in, any fees associated with having the cruise ship docked there, services that they use. But part of these cruise ports and fees are designed for port facilities and for infrastructure for the cruise passengers that are visiting. So you're already paying basically a per passenger fee every single time you go to a port. Now, they don't just simply raise your existing port fees and taxes. They're going to add a new one to you, a passenger arrival fee that is supposed to be paying for things that you're already paying for. So I always got to ask, is this really about improving things there or is this really a money grab from cruise passengers is this a way that ports are using to get more money to fill their coffers to take money out of your pockets 
It almost feels like double dipping to me. Now, this is not going to stop me from cruising. This is not going to make me go, well, screw this place. I'm not going to go there and visit. But I had the question, you know, are they being honest about what this money is for? And finally, we got some changes from Norwegian Cruise Lines. Norwegian Cruise Lines has a perk program called Free at Sea. And this includes things like drink package, Wi-Fi, and specialty dining. And Norwegian is making some changes to it, starting off with the name. It's no longer going to be free at sea, it is now going to be more at sea. Now, more at sea became available for bookings yesterday on October the 1st for sailings after January the 1st. So if you booked starting yesterday, you would see more at sea, but it doesn't go into effect until after the beginning of the year. Now, starting off with the drink packages, they have added some additional drinks and options to the drink package. They've added more premium brands and now includes the majority of options available on board the ship. But with the new drink package, it still does not include bottled water and it still does not include coffee on board the ship. So those two items are still not covered. Now, for the specialty dining, passengers will receive an additional specialty dining night, but that is going to be based on the length of your sailing and your stateroom category. Now, they've also changed what they consider to be a specialty meal. It may now include up to three appetizers, one super salad, one entree, and three desserts. Now, they have also made some upgrades to the Wi-Fi option. Originally for free at sea, if you got the Wi-Fi, it covered the first two passengers in the cabin. It will now cover everybody in the cabin, but it is still not unlimited. You will still only receive a specified number of minutes that you can use during your cruise. And again, that's based on the length of the sailing and your cabin category. The $50 shore excursion credit remains the same. No changes there. Like the majority of things with cruise lines, if you get more, you're gonna pay more. And Norwegian Cruise Lines is no different. So there were some mock bookings done to kind of see what the price differences were gonna be because, it, because of course it's all based on length of the cruise. It's based on your cabin category. So it's not really necessarily a set price, but some mock bookings were done on an aft facing balcony on a seven night cruise to see what the price differences would be. So under the old free at sea options, the drink package gratuities came out to be $305.20. And the dining gratuities were $39.60 for two guests. So that's the free at sea prices. Now under the more at sea perks, we're talking same cabin, same length of cruise. The price went to $420 for the drink package. And the dining room gratuities jumped up to $120. So yeah, they added more options to the drink package but the price also went up by $115. And for dining room gratuities, which were $39.60, so essentially $40, jumped up to $120. That is an $80 price increase. And that's just the gratuities. And so that is the new more at sea. Yeah, more at sea, all right. You're gonna pay more at sea on Norwegian Cruise Lines if you take advantage of any of their perks. So what do you guys think about Norwegian Cruise Line's new more at sea? Is it worth it? Is this something you would even take advantage of? Is the price differences between the current one and the new one really offset the changes? Yeah, they're offering more premium alcohol choices, but if you don't drink those, is it worth it to you at all? Yes, you get faster internet now that they are on the Starlink system. Yes, if you have more than two people in your cabin, it can still be used, but you are still limited to a certain number of minutes. And if you go above those minutes, you still have to upgrade and purchase a Wi-Fi package from the cruise ship anyway. Then an $80 price increase on the mock bookings for the gratuities for specialty dining. Who's eating three entrees, a soup, a salad, an entree, and then three desserts, you know? And yes, you get an extra night of specialty dining, but wow. But that is a huge gratuity jump for Norwegian cruise lines. Now do keep in mind though, it can vary based on the length of the cruise in the cabin category. So this was done on a specific aft facing balcony. They are more expensive. It was done on a seven day cruise. So if you had an inside stateroom or an ocean view stateroom on a four or five day cruise, 
obviously the numbers are going to be much less but just something to keep in mind you go in there and you select what used to be free at sea you may notice some increases in the pricing and we're going to have to see is this going to be popular for norwegian cruisers or is this really norwegian's way of saying hmm can we make a few more dollars off of these folks? All right, and that is gonna be our video for today. If you've enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, do me a favor and hit subscribe. It is free to do so. Helps our channel grow. Let you know anytime we put out a new video, we will be live tonight, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Feel free, come over, join the live, join the conversation. We have a great group of people over there. And usually we have a lot of fun everybody is welcome tonight six o'clock central standard time all right i hope everyone out there has a really great day and like always we will see you out on the high seas